All right, good morning. Today's lecture is on innovation inspired by animal mimicry. So, first we'll understand the difference between invention and innovation. Invention is about creating something new and original. Innovation involves turning that novelty, that innovation into a commercial product. Let us take an example and then illustrate this fact. Telephone invented by Alexander Graham Bell. So that is an example for invention. Based on this invention, IBM created the first mobile phone. So that is an innovation. So this is the difference between invention and a innovation. So the process of innovation takes three steps. Idea generation, problem solving and implementation. So, in this lecture today, I will describe how we can extract ideas from animals in order to create new things. So, out of the three steps of the process, step one is the difficult step. So, most of the time we do not have good ideas that can be turned into new innovations. So, when we are lacking good ideas, one thing that we can do is look at the nature, look at the animals and then perhaps we will be able to grab an idea. So, what is mimicry? Animal mimicry. Mimicry is the act or art of copying or imitating something very closely. Look at the picture. What do you see there? On surface view, you will see a bug landed on a bunch of tree. That is what you see. That is what the first glance tells you. But actually this is not an insect. This is a flower. This flower uses animal mimicry to mimic the female insect closely and invite the living actual insect to come and copulate with this dummy female insect. This is not actually an insect. So, without recognizing this as a flower, the male insect will come and try to copulate with this flower. So, during the process, this flower get pollinated by insects. So, this is a nice way of inviting the pollinators. So, this flower takes the form of an insect. So, that is mimicry, closely imitating something else. So, animals adapt to live in hostile environments. So, let us study this world map for a moment. This map shows you the human population density across the five continents. You have the Americas, Africa, Europe, Asia and here Australia, right? 
So darker the color means that area is densely populated. When the color get lighter, that means these are the least populated areas in the world. So Arctic regions and Antarctic regions are virtually colorless. That means very less or no human lives there. Doesn't mean that when humans are not there, it doesn't mean that nobody lives there. There lives a lot of animals. If you take the Arctic region, you will find these animals like polar bears, walrus, seals, they occupy these lands. If you take Antarctica, it is hugely populated by animals, particularly what is shown in the picture are emperor penguins. There are millions of penguins living there. But only the fact, uh, the, the only thing is that the humans, they are not there. Because we, we are not adapted to live in these extreme cold areas. Right? So, where the human fails, animal survives. Right? So, they have, they have better adaptations to win, live in these colder environments. So, we can say animals adapt to live in hostile, that means not so friendly environments. If you take the li life timeline on earth, our planet earth is about 5 billion years old and for like 1.5 billion years planet earth was without any form of life. Life came to exist in planet earth roughly about 3.5 billion years ago. And this is how the evolution took place as we know it. And humans and their ancestors, that means hominoids, came into existence on the planet Earth about 4 million years ago. And the modern human, human, the modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, they came into being about 200 thousand to three hundred thousand years ago. So you will see that we humans came to be on this planet quite early, uh, so, sorry, quite lately. That means about two hundred to three hundred thousand years, right? Let us compare evolutionary distance between shark and humans. Shark came into existence about around 400 million years ago. That is even 200 million years before the dinosaurs. Humans, the Homo sapiens, first modern humans evolved from their early hominid ancestors between 200 to 300 years ago. So, in this picture, you will see that there is a diver, a human diver and a shark, right? So the evolutionary distance between these two are roughly about 400 million years. So shark has been living in oceans for almost 400 million years and this diver had have to equip himself with all this diving gear in order to swim in these waters. Whereas the shark is fully evolved to dominate aquatic world. So you see that in this case shark is having a distinct advantage to live in this aquatic environment. So we call it adaptation for its environment. So, art of artwork created after animal mimicry. So, we have been watching animals 
from the dawn of the human civilization and sometimes making uh, sometimes we have been creating some artwork based on observing animals like for instance dancing particularly this vannam dancing in this particular case gajaga that is a reference to elephant so this form of dance has been created by observing the movements of an elephant and if you go to far east there are form of martial arts said to be copied after copied after and developed after the movement of animals like monkeys the tigers eagle snakes likewise so you'll have monkey style kung fu right so these are all examples for artwork created after animal mimicry so my lecture today is not to discuss details of artwork created after animal mimicry rather to discuss useful inventions created after copying things from animals so this man Percy Shaw one day he was traveling in a very gloomy lonely corners of the country riding a car so it was getting dark it, and then he was having great difficulties watching where he goes and spotting the edges of the road so this is the dusky road that he was driving right and he was having all the problems locating the edges of the road with these street lamps fitted to the car so all of a sudden he saw at a bend these two sparkly shiny dots this is what he saw and then he make it a point to stop the car got out of it and had a closer look then he realized the sparkly two spots are actually the eyes of a cat and the light of the car actually reflecting on the eyes of the cat and they are sparkly so this gave an idea to Percy Shaw to develop what we now know as cat's eye so this is what he develops right so he developed cat eye and he got a patent for it in 1934 and he set up a company to manufacture his invention in large scale now we have these cat's eyes fitted in highway so the drivers the night drivers will have no problems locating the center line as well as edges of the road without any problem right so simple observation by Percy Shaw so a nice invention nice creation with a commercial value to it so by the time of his death in 70s early 70s he was considered as one of the richest persons lived in England and another occasion this man George D Mestral was walking his dog in an evening in a meadow meadow is a place where you will find grass and various other uh, small bushes and he noted during this walk his dog is a this is a retriever i guess this dog has picked some seeds from neighboring bushes so this is how the dog appeared 
So, it has got these seeds stuck onto his fur all over the body. So, these are the seeds from burdock tree and George was trying to sort of pull these seeds out and then so that these seeds have firmly fitted, stuck to the fur of the dog. So, this gave George Mastrell the idea to develop a very popular product called Velco. Right? Velco has got two faces, uh, two uh, surfaces. One of the surfaces reflect the fur of the door. Other surface reflect the surface of the seeds of Murdoch, uh, Burdock tree. So, when these two put together, you will get a firmly sealing tape. So, Velco is being used routinely and quite widely all over the world now and this product has made George de Mestrel a very rich person. So, these are some of the products that you will find Velco uh, containing products. You will find them everywhere like in shoes, computer bags, all these products. So, it is also, uh, you should note that this also has been created by a simple observation of a burdock seed stuck onto a fur of a dog. Next example is gecko tape. How many times that you have seen geckos right, running around, uh, get themselves attached to very slippery surfaces like glass. So, this is a gecko who is sitting on a surface of a glass. So, you will wonder how this gecko stuck himself to this surface. The secret lies in the lower surface of his feet, the fingers, right. The gecko's foot is such a sticky surface due to a very tiny hair like structures called setae. So, these are small nano scale structures that gives this firm grip on surfaces which are very or extremely slippery. Right? So, based on this gecko's feet structure, a scientist called Gustav Klob from the University of Kiel, Germany developed a commercial product called gecko tape. So, it is extremely sticky and this is how it works and in this picture you will see that Stanislaw Globe attached himself to a ceiling with a small piece of gecko tape. It can hold such a big weight, weight of even a grown man. So, this is an invention based on the gecko foot. So, for the next example, we will go to Japan, right. You will have seen this famous Shinkansen train, also called as the bullet train, right. What is in the picture is an older version of the Shinkansen or the bullet train and this train can travel at a very fast speed. The maximum speed is close to 300 kilometers per hour. This train gives the people the option of fast locomotion, but it comes with a problem. When this train travels through a tunnel, which are quite common in railway lines, it gives out a big sound, scaring the passengers. This is called the sonic bloom. It's a big loud bloom, right, a sound and 
engineers were working on the ways of reducing this sound, right? So this sonic sound, sonic boom. And this person, Eiji Nakatsu, who is an engineer by profession, was working on this problem and one day he saw how a kingfisher dives into the water to catch fish. So he was closely studying how this kingfisher dives into water to catch fish and he compared these two situations. A kingfisher diving into the sea and this bullet train coming out of or coming uh, going into a tunnel displacing air. Kingfisher was, Kingfisher was also displacing water in this case and this train was displacing air. So he thought the problem lies with the shape of the engine part of the train. So Nakatsu gave a different shape to the Sinkansen bullet train. So this is the shape that he gave to the train. It is the shape taken from the beak and the head part of the kingfisher. So now the engine part, the front part of the train looked like the beak of the kingfisher. And this shape has efficiently solved the problem of this loud boom noise when the train travels into and out of a tunnel. So a confisher gave this engineer the idea of solving this problem. So now these trains are routinely used for traveling without much of a noise creation uh, and scare in the passengers. In 2005, a very famous car company, Mercedes-Benz, unveiled this car model. I don't know how many of you have seen this car. Quite unusual in its shape and appearance. So the Mercedes named this car as Bionic car. The main features of this Bionic car as for the manufacturer is that it is very poor, uh, economical and quite maneuverable, right? So you will wonder why this car giant introduced a car like this. So this Bionic car is a combination of biology and mechanical engineering techniques. And it was developed after this small fish called box fish. We already know that shark is so evolved to the water environment and remains as one of the fastest swimmers in aquatic world because of its shape and agility. However, efficiency is something else, right? When a fish swims in a watery environment, it encounters what is known as drag. Drag is the force acting opposite to the relative motion of any object moving with respect to a surrounding fluid. In this case, it is water. So if the, uh, the, the fish swims in this direction, drag works in the opposite direction. And you can calculate the drag coefficient using this equation. And if you do so for box fish as well as for shark, these are the figures that you will obtain. For shark, the drag is very less, 0 0.1 is very good for a fast swimmer. However, for box fish, it is even less. It is 0 
Compared to the shark, one of the best swimmers in the water world, boxfish is quite efficient swimmer because it encounters very low drag, resistant to swimming. So, Mercedes was actually copying the shape of this boxfish in order to produce this car. So, this is one of the examples where the automobile industry copied or inspired, uh, uh, ins inspired uh, from an animal, right? In this case, the box, box fish. The next example is Dew Bank Bottle. Look at the woman in the picture. This woman is trying to collect some water, probably for drinking. And the drought is so severe that only a small amount of water is left. This is common for areas which are extremely dry. We are also experiencing a dry season now. So three or four districts in our country are now suffering from severe drought. They are having problems of getting water. However, this beetle, whose name is Namib Desert Beetle, lives in deserts, but will have no problems finding water or obtaining water whenever that beetle is thirsty. So, all what this bird, uh, the, the, the beetle has to do is positioning himself into this upright position, this way, and here yeah, this, this is how that this bug position his body and there are some nanoscale bumps on the body of this beetle right and those nano bumps can collect water vapor present in the air and direct that water into small droplet and then into bigger droplets and push them forward towards the mouth of the beetle. So, this beetle has found a way of trapping the water vapor in the atmosphere and condense it and get into the, the, the mouth region by this way by siding towards the mouth region and this is how this bug find water in a water scarce uh, places like desert. So, copying from this, Kiet Park, an inventor, created the Dew Bank bottle. This is how it looked like. The surface mimic closely the surface of the bug's body. Here. So, if you place this dew bank bottle outside, it can trap the dew in the atmosphere and condense them into small droplets of water and that droplets of water will slide down and get collected in this small reservoir there. So, this will give sufficient water about 1 to 1.5 liters of water if you place them uh, to uh, uh, in outside uh, outside environment for a considerable time so this kid is now drinking from this dew bank bottle this invention is based on the namib desert beetle passive back support exoskeleton we humans, we have an endoskeleton. That means our skeleton is hidden inside the body. Look at the woman in the picture. This woman is carrying a heavy load. You see that load is so great that woman had to carry it with great difficulty. right? And the posture of the woman's body is so 
distorted, awkward, that this woman will not be able to carry such a huge weight, uh, the weight for a long time. Maybe it is demanded by the nature of the job. So this woman had to carry such a big load. However, this is dangerously uh, uh, affecting the well-being of the woman's body, right? So, carrying weight is not seemingly not so big a problem for this dung beetle. So, look at this small beetle carrying a huge weight, so big ball of dung. Dung is animal dung, right? So, carrying weight is not a problem for this beetle seemingly. The secret lies in the exoskeleton of the beetle. So, unlike human, we have, we have a endoskeleton, skeleton is buried inside the body. The bugs, this dung beetle has an exoskeleton. The skeleton is actually covering the whole body. So, getting inspired by this bug's structure, the body structure, exoskeletons have been created for people who are required to carry greater weight as a requirement of the job, right? So, this man is supported with an exoskeleton, so his body is promptly supported protected by this exoskeleton and he is now able to carry bigger weight. So, this is an innovation that inspired by a small beetle. So, if you take the festive seasons, uh, we have New Year festival and Christmas festival. So, these are the times that people flock to shopping malls for doing their shopping. So, this is the inside of a shopping mall where people gather to buy clothing for the festive season. And when such a big number of people gather inside a shopping mall, it will get heated up, right? It will inconvenience the, the shoppers. So, the shop mall owners have has to air condition the whole facility, right? For that, they will spend quite a lot of money, right? Air, condition, air conditioning is very expensive given the, the expenses for electricity. What is shown in the picture is a termite mount. You must have seen these termite mounds in the nature. If you close, uh, take a closer look at it, inside these mounds, there lives thousands and sometimes millions of termite, right? And these termites will also create heat due to their body heat. So, heat accumulation inside the insect mound, uh, the, the, the termite mound is a common thing. However, these insect build these mound in a way that there is continuous tunnel system like this, right. It is a network of tunnel systems and when the center of the mound get heated up, that heated up air will travel through this tunnel and out of the mound and the fresh air will come to the mound from the other the, the, the network of tubes created below that, right. So, this is how the termite mound keep itself air conditioned, right. So, the ins insect inside will not feel the heat. So, there is a continuous inward and outward flow of air inside a termite mound. So, tempting from this 
nature's invention building expertise engineers in zimbabwe have created this shopping complex called east age building it's a huge building with no air condition you know zimbabwe is a country with a very high humidity and temperature and a building like this should essentially be air conditioned for the convenience of the shoppers but in this case this building has created in the way of a termite mound the tube system how it works in the termite mound and then has no fitted air condition so this is how the, the termite engineers have taught the human engineers to build efficiently using nature's air conditioners so before i wind up i also would like to mention some other inventions created after mimicking or closely studying animals spider silk medicated tape which is in the market now one of the strongest but gentle medicated tape available and then anti falling coating for ships when ships sail for some times in in the sea the underbelly of the ships will get attacked by all these sea creatures slime molds and some of the sea creatures that get firmly attached to the underbelly of the ship so people have to take the ships out and then clean the surface and repaint it right however studying the scales or studying the skin of the shark they have learned that due to these micro scales on the surface of the shark skin it repels the slime and other sea creatures that usually come and stuck onto the surface so they have created anti falling coating paints for ships so the problem of falling is now not there and then brighter led lights light emitting diodes based on the uh, studies of how flyers created light so now these bright led lights are on the market based on the light emitting technology or light emitting mechanism copied from fireflies and then cheap solar cells based on the arrangement of orange puffball spongy and this is the solar cells developed after the this individual cellular arrangement of this puffball spongy so you will see that nature can inspire great invention nature can teach you a lot of things if you are ready to listen so my advice is that pay attention to nature when you go out next time and probably you could catch up an idea that leads to the next great invention right so only thing that you have to be smart enough to get this uh, information or download this information stored in the nature and put that into a new invention so i thank you for your attention